Senator from California. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Um, I listened to every word my friend spoke, and I respected very much the words of my colleague from West Virginia, but I just want to be clear. I could not disagree with them more. And why the majority leader and my friends would push for the overturning of a clean power plant rule, which will in fact save lives, that's a fact. Because when the air gets cleaner, you save lives. And will also protect our planet from the ravages of climate change. I don't know why they would take that stand. I really don't. Because when we're sworn in here, we're supposed to protect the health and safety of the people of our nation. Above all, not protect one utility over another. That's, you know, that's the private sector. We're here to protect lives. We're here to protect the planet. And so I'm going to go into depth as to why I feel this is very wrong-headed. And particularly, I have great respect for our majority leader. Senator McConnell has the power to bring anything before the body that he chooses. That is his right, and he has done this. But I would question, given what happened in Paris, given the need to keep America safe, why are we going after the Clean Air Act today? It doesn't make sense. We should be moving to the omnibus budget agreement. We should be looking at every part of that budget to make America safe. For example, in the EPA budget, we could look at ways to improve chemical safety. We could look at ways to protect our reservoirs. We could look at the Department of Homeland Security, at ways to step up security at our ports, our airports, our border checkpoints, our railroads. We could look at funding biometrics, which could help us fight against homeland terrorism. In the State Department, we could look at ways to, to enhance security at our embassies and our consulates. There's a lot of talk about Benghazi, 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 but the Republican budget the last time cut embassy security. So how about we look at that? Why don't we look at the Office of Personnel Management? Look at ways we could boost our cyber defenses after one of the largest data breaches in our government's history. At the Department of Justice, we need to make sure the FBI and local law enforcement have the resources they need to keep our families safe. Now, I compliment everyone who came to the table and got a universal agreement on the budget for the next two years. Why are we looking at repealing a clean power plant rule instead of taking up that budget agreement and looking in a bipartisan way at every single agency, Mr. President, that we fund to make sure they are doing everything to keep America safe? Now, we know we've been doing something right because I was talking to one of my colleagues from New York, and he pointed out that the terrorists have been after us since 9-11. So let's look at what we're doing right, and let's see if there's anything we're not doing right, and let's beef it up and make sure that our refugee policy is the right policy. We have a lot of work to do. But no, here we go again. Just two weeks ago, Senate Republicans led an attack on one of our nation's landmark environmental laws, the Clean Water Act, and we defeated them, but now they're back again, this time against clean air. Clean air. They are attacking the Clean Air Act and the President's common sense proposals to address dangerous climate change. Of course, most of them don't even believe that climate change is happening. They say, well, we're not a scientist. That's right, you're not. So why not listen to the 98% of scientists who know this is happening? The Senate is considering at least one Congressional Review Act resolutions. 
And the one we're talking about now has to do with existing power plants. And Senator Capito has introduced that, and it would block the clean power plan for existing power plants from going into effect. This is dangerous. Dangerous because we would be throwing out the first rules to reduce carbon pollution from power plants, which emit 31% of our nation's total carbon emissions. So if we're ever going to attack the problem of too much carbon pollution, we've got to go to our power, power plant side. And I commend the president for his courage and for doing the right thing. Now, I've heard colleagues say, oh, the process wasn't good. What more do you want? The process used to develop these rules was extremely open and inclusive. EPA met with state officials and a broad range of stakeholders. They held 600 meetings for the clean power plant alone. 600 meetings. How many more meetings do you want? A thousand? EPA received more than six million comments from the public on both the existing power plant rule and the new power plant rule. Senator McConnell's resolution to block the standards for new power plants and Senator Capito's resolution we're talking about now to block the clean power plant would not only toss out these extensive outreach efforts, but get this, the hubris of this. This resolution would prohibit the Environmental Protection Agency from ever undertaking similar rulemakings, leaving no plan in place to address carbon pollution from this source. Let me repeat that. Not only does this resolution toss out this rule that would clean our skies, but they say you can never do it again. This is, this is an attack on the American people. I want to remind my colleagues that EPA is setting these carbon pollution standards not because they decided one day to go after the coal companies. They did not. They're doing it because under the Clean Air Act, they have to do it. It's an authority that they have that has been confirmed by the Supreme Court. And I don't know that my colleagues want to hear it, but I'm sorry, I will repeat it. In Massachusetts v. EPA, the Supreme Court found very clearly that carbon pollution is covered under the Clean Air Act. George W. Bush fought it for eight years. He fought it for eight years, but they wrote the following in their decision, the Supreme Court, quote, because greenhouse gases fit well within the Clean Air Act's capacious definition of air pollutant, we hold that EPA has the statutory authority to regulate the emission of such gases. So all that talk about EPA is overreaching, carbon isn't dangerous, you don't have to fix it, is so much baloney. The court found it straightforwardly in Massachusetts versus EPA in 07. Now, following that decision, the Obama administration issued an endangerment finding showing that current and future concentrations of carbon pollution are harmful to public health and welfare. Now, once that was made, we have to act. We can't make believe that this planet isn't in danger. We can't make believe that pollution from power plants don't cause problems for our people. We have to act. And so the administration is not only well within its rights, if they did not act, they would be sued and they would lose because they have to protect the people from too much carbon pollution. It is required under the Clean Air Act and sustained by the Supreme Court in 2007. So the resolution before us today, and if we go to a second resolution on new power plants, because not only do the Republicans oppose standards for old plants, they even oppose standards for newly constructed uh, plants. Both of these resolutions, both of them, are harmful to public health and the environment, and many groups oppose them. 
So I'm going to show you some of the groups that oppose this Republican resolution. And America, you decide who you want to stand with. The Republicans who want to overturn the Clean Air Act rule or these people. How about this? Public health groups, the Allergy and Asthma Network, the American Lung Association, the Public Health Association, the Thoracic Society, the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, Children's Environmental Health Network, Health Care Without Harm, Trust for America's Health. Now that's American as apple pie. These are the people who stand up and protect our health and the health of our families. Who do you want to stand with? The Republicans who are pushing this on us on a day that we should be making America safe from the terrorists or these groups? Business groups, the American Sustainable Business Council, Business for Innovative Climate and Energy, Environmental Entrepreneurs, Consumer Groups, Center for Accessible Technology, Citizens Action Coalition, Greenlining Institute, National Consumer Law Center, Ohio Partners for Affordable Energy, Public Citizen, TURN, the Utility Reform Network, Virginia Citizens Consumer Council, the Washington State Community Action Partnership, a World Institute for a Sustainable Humanity, Latino groups, why do they care? Because a lot of times they live in communities that suffer from filthy air. The ABC Foundation Green Forum, the Citizen Energy, the City Project, Common Ground for Conservative, I'm sorry, for Conservation America. There's more Latino groups, it goes on and on. Emerald Cities, Green Latinos, Ideas for Us, Latino Coalition for Healthy California, National Hispanic Medical Association, National Latino Evangelical Coalition, Solar Four, environmental groups, I'll just mention a few. Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments. Could I just say, if you were to ask people who do you trust more, the Senate or the nurses, dare I say, dare I say the results. I would guess it would be 99 in favor, 99% in favor of nurses, as opposed to us. And you know what, why don't we listen to them? They don't want to see these rules overturned. Appalachian Voices, Arkansas Public Policy Panel, Center for Biological Diversity, Clean Air Task Force, Clean Water Action, Climate Parents, Conservation Voters for Idaho, Conservation Voters for South Carolina, Defenders of Wildlife, Earth Justice, Elders Climate Action, Environmental America, Environment America, and 24 state affiliates, Environmental Advocates, of New York. It goes on. It goes on. These are the groups that I am reading that oppose this action by my Republican friends because they want clean air. They want to protect their families and they want to fight climate change. Environmental Justice Leadership Forum, Environmental Law Policy Center, Health Care Without Harm, Interfaith Power and Light, and 28 state affiliates. League of Conservation Voters and seven state affiliates, Maine Conservation Voters, Montana Environmental Information, Natural Resources Defense Council, New Virginia Majority, PDA Tucson, Penn Environment, Physicians for, Respo for Social Responsibility, Protect Our Winters, Rachel Carson Council, Sierra Club, Southern Environmental Law Center, Southern Oregon Climate Action Now, Union of Concerned Scientists, Virginia Organizing, Voices for Progress, Western Organization of Resource Councils, Wisconsin Environment, World Wildlife Fund. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that all of the groups be placed in the record who oppose this rule. Without this objection. Rule, oppose this rule change. So we can see clearly, um, and, and I think the letter from the American Sustainable Business Council says a very important statement here. Quote, history shows that smart, clean energy policies are good for our environment, good for our economy and business. We urge you to oppose both resolutions to disapprove the established safeguards. Another letter from many of these leading public health organizations, quote, please make your priority 
the health of your constituents and vote no on these Congressional Review Act resolutions. I find it really hard to comprehend that a majority of this Senate, led by my Republican friends, would side with the special interests above the people who simply want to breathe clean air, who simply want to see us dedicated to the fight against climate change. These groups understand the importance of taking action to reduce carbon pollution. And, and when we reduce that dangerous pollution from power plants, the Clean Power Plan will deliver important health benefits. And this is what I hope the American people will understand. Mr. President, this is science. This is science. By the year 2030, if we defeat this Republican effort, Here's what happens to our community. We will prevent up to 3,600 premature deaths. We will prevent up to 1,700 heart attacks. We will prevent up to 90,000 asthma attacks in children. And we will prevent 300,000 missed work days and school days. Why on earth does anyone want to vote to repeal a rule that will prevent 3,600 premature deaths, 1,700 heart attacks, 90,000 asthma attacks, and 300,000 missed work days and school days. Why? The answer is special economic interest. That's the answer. It is a disgrace, a total and complete disgrace. We should be fighting for our families, not for the special interests. These are the co-benefits of reducing carbon. A lot of times you'll hear my colleague staff say, carbon isn't dangerous. You breathe it out. It's not dangerous. The fact is, when you make these improvements to the power plants to reduce carbon pollution, there are co-benefits. These are the co-benefits. They are, in fact, articulated. The Clean Power Plan will cut emissions from existing plants 32% below 2012 levels by 2030. Now, the other thing, it's going to save $85 a year on utility bills. $85. So everyone who says, oh, this is terrible, it's going to raise our energy bills, doesn't know the facts. The Clean Power Plan also includes help to low-income Americans through the Clean Energy Incentive Program which prioritizes early investment in energy efficiency projects in low-income communities. So if you reduce your use of energy because you are conserving energy, you are using less energy, you're cleaning the environment, and your bills go down. That's what we call low-hanging fruit, conservation. The American people support efforts to reduce dangerous carbon pollution. According to a League of Conservation poll, in August, 60% of voters support the Clean Power Plan, while just 31% oppose it. So I have to ask my colleagues, my friends, who I fight with on this constantly, why do you side with the special interests against the people? The people who will benefit from longer lives, fewer sick days. Fewer school days lost, fewer asthma attacks. Why? And why do you turn against 60% of the voters who support the Clean Power Plan? And the only answer I come up with is, you're not really thinking about the majority of the American people. You're thinking about the special interests who call here all the time and push us to do things to help them. I tell you, there was another report in January of 2015 by Stanford University. You've heard of Stanford University. It's pretty well thought of. A lot of you went there and graduated from there. 83% of Americans, including 61% of Republicans say, if nothing is done to reduce emissions, climate change will be a serious problem in the future. And 74% of Americans say, the federal government should take substantial steps to combat climate change. Look, all of this furor against these rules doesn't go with the American people. It goes against where the American people are. 
83 percent of Americans, including 61 percent of Republicans, say reduce these emissions. We have to stop climate change. We already see the ravages around us. We already see climate refugees. We already see extreme weather. It's destabilizing. It's dangerous. 74% of Americans say the federal government should be taking substantial steps to combat climate change. Yes, the president has listened and he has put forward these rules that are substantial steps because the emissions come from these power plants, 31% of the carbon emissions. So instead of just standing up here and demagoguing and saying this is horrible and frightening the American people, why not join hands with us and do this right? My state is a leader in clean energy. We are creating jobs hand over fist. We are doing great in California because we care about climate and we care about jobs. And those things go hand in hand. When you put a solar rooftop on, you can't outsource that job. You got to hire someone in your state. That's why we have so much strong support in our state, because we see the, the results of pushing forward aggressively for clean energy. People are happy about it. They're proud of it. They're doing well. Climate change is real. We have to stay, take reasonable steps to reduce carbon pollution, like the Clean Power Plan. And all we see from my Republican friends, God bless them, I'm very close with a lot of them, are attack after attack after attack on the environment, on attack against the Clean Water Act, attack against the Clean Air Act, attacks against the Safe Drinking Water Act. These resolutions that are coming before us Ignore the long and successful history of the Clean Air Act. You heard the same arguments, Mr. President, against the original Clean Air Act that you're, you're hearing today. In the 40 years since the Clean Air Act was enacted, our GDP, our gross domestic product, has risen not 100 percent, but 207 percent. Now, if you go back to those debates, and I've gone back to them, you would hear the very same voices coming from the very same side of the aisle decrying the Clean Air Act. Oh, this is going to be a disaster. Well, it not only wasn't a disaster, it was a resounding success. And where we export our ideas to the world, clean energy is an area where we are exporting those ideas. Supporting the Clean Air Act makes good fiscal sense. The benefits of this landmark law, the Clean Air Act, amount to more than 40 times the cost of regulation. Let me say that again. For every dollar we have spent complying with the Clean Air Act, we get more than $40 of benefits in return. As I mentioned, my state, I'm so very proud of it. We are on a path to meet or exceed our goals of reducing climate pollution to 1990 levels by 2020, just five years from now. That is required in our state, AB 32. And by the way, big oil and big polluters tried to overturn it on the ballot, and the people said, go home. We're happy. We like this. We embrace it. And they turned back the millions of dollars spent by big, dirty oil. And we won. Clean air won. And we are on the path to achieving our ultimate goal of reducing emissions by 80% by 2050. Imagine. During the first year and a half of my state's carbon reduction program called Cap and Trade, we added 491,000 jobs. So all this fear-mongering about jobs lost is so much fear-mongering. Because guess what? Look at my state. 491,000 jobs added. And that job creation actually outpaces the national growth rate of jobs.
California has been a leader in reducing its carbon footprint, and the U.S. must take steps to address this threat. Now, I'm just going to go back and read you the main prediction of mainstream scientists made many, many years ago about what would happen if we weren't aggressive on climate. One, temperature extremes, they said, would be more frequent. NOAA scientists predicted that 2015 will be the hottest year since record-keeping began, and it will displace 2014. So the first prediction by the scientists that temperature extremes would be more frequent has been proven true. 2015 will be the hottest year on record. Before that, 2014 was the hottest year on record. Secondly, they told us, and this is when I took over the chair of EPW committee, which I regretted having to hand over the gavel to my friend Jim Inhofe, which I did. But I did hold it for about six years, if I remember rightly. Is that right? A little over six years. I had the gavel, but who's counting? The fact is, we called the scientists before the committee. They said temperature extremes will be more frequent. That's proven out. They said heat waves will be more frequent. That's proven out. They said areas affected by drought will increase. And Lord knows the West knows that's been proven. Wildfires will be bigger and more frequent, they said. And we know in the West that's true. Tropical storms and hurricanes will be more intense. Just ask New Jersey and New York. There will be more heavy precipitation and flooding events. We've seen that with our own eyes. We've seen cars floating down the streets in Texas. Polar sea ice will shrink. That is a fact. Sea levels will rise. That is a fact. All of these predictions by climate experts have become a reality today. So I say to my friends, why are you willing to gamble? Why are you willing to take this gamble? and walk away from trying to reduce the ravages of climate change. That's just immoral in the face of what we know from the scientists and in the face of what we know from reality. We see all of their predictions coming true. The fact is climate change endangers the health and safety of our families and our planet. We cannot delay action to reduce harmful carbon pollution, and I thank President Obama for his leadership on this critical issue. These rules are an essential element of our nation's global leadership on climate change. There's no doubt about it. And at the end of this month, President Obama and other world leaders will gather to reach an agreement on how all of the nations will work to reduce carbon pollution that is causing climate change. Nearly 160 nations have reduced their plan. And I asked my Republican colleagues, if you don't like President Obama's plan, don't just repeal it. Tell us how you would reduce harmful carbon pollution. Tell us how you are going to save all these lives. Tell us how. Explain to us, how are you, gonna, how are you going to prevent 3,600 premature deaths, 1,700 heart attacks, 90,000 asthma attacks in kids, and 300,000 missed work days and school days? Where is your plan? Don't just get up there and say it's going to cost more for electricity, because the fact is we have a special part of this rule that addresses the cost and will actually save money for consumers because we're going to push the low-hanging fruit of energy efficiency. These resolutions will take us backwards, prevent us from acting to avert the worst impacts of climate. This Republican initiative is going to endanger the health of millions of our children and families from dangerous carbon pollution, and it will stop the co-benefits to them from going into effect. So I really know we're going to have a robust debate. As I said at the start, I think we ought to be debating the omnibus budget agreement. I think we ought to be debating how to keep America safe from the terrorists instead of figuring out ways to repeal a law that, if you're successful, will in fact mean adverse health consequences for our people. We should be debating how to keep America safe today. We're not debating that. I'm very sorry about that. And I agree with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle who say they know the end result of this. 
Yes, there's a majority of people here who are going to vote to repeal these clean power rules. We know that. Yes, we know that will go to the president. And yes, we know the president will veto that. And yes, we know when that comes back, we are going to sustain the president. We know the outcome. Why not get to work on keeping America safe, going to this omnibus budget resolution, looking throughout the budget, seeing ways that we can make sure our people are kept safe from terrorists, and for goodness sakes, while we're at it, keep them safe from pollution. That is something we have well in our hands, and what is before us today will not keep them safe from pollution. And I look forward to this thing being rejected at the end of the day. I thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. Senator from Indiana.